Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Belongi Art. Um, through this video, I am going to talk about a little about decorating the classroom, mental health, planning, and I'm going to end the video with rubrics. So welcome. I'm so glad you joined me. Um, I have my coffee. It is early in the morning, um, and let's dive into it. Decorating the classroom is a wonderful way of the students. If you let them decorate the classroom, come up with projects, and then let them put it on the wall, they kind of feel like it's their classroom a little bit. So I'm actually working on that right now. Um, the next thing on the list is mental health is huge this year. Um, a lot of educators um, are trying to gather trainings um, to kind of know a little bit more about mental health and with teaching yes we're teaching the curriculum but it's also learning how to manage a group of people at the same time and what goes along with that is really being knowledgeable also um, in mental health some advice I can give as a parent myself um, definitely um, talking to your children that helps um, I try to check in with my kids either the morning or the evening um, throughout the day sometime during the day just checking in with your child um, that will help with their mental health as well um, and I try to do that myself as a parent it, it does it helps to um, kind of give your child an open platform to talk with somebody um, if they go through the whole day and they don't feel like they've talked to anybody that can be a very lonely feeling so definitely be that parent that even if you don't get an answer from your kid it's kind of especially if you have teenagers and they give you kind of that shrug of the shoulders like yeah everything's fine at least they know that yes eventually you guys can have a conversation they will eventually open up to you um, I wouldn't push it at the start but um, they will open up to you when they're when they're ready okay so over planning um, I would say with planning I would over plan on the weekend um, a lot of teachers I know we don't want to work on the weekend it's usually family time but if you over plan on the weekend that will make the Monday through Friday stretch a lot easier I always assume I don't have my planning period because there's a lot of other things that can happen during the planning period. You could have a parent conference. You could have a student come need to meet with you. Um, you just need to organize your classroom because we all know halfway through the day, sometimes our desks are totally messy. Um, that's me anyway. Um, so I need to like reorganize everything. Um, so always assume that the planning period is like not there. Um, that'll make it easier um, and just over kind of over plan always have a plan B for all the lessons you do with students especially if they finish early this is another advice as well um, so I hope those tips can kind of help you and I am gonna do a longer video going back to mental health because that's such a huge topic this school year um, but for this video it's all about rubrics um, when I started teaching I really did not know much about rubrics. I knew how to teach art, but I didn't really understand the evaluation system when it came to delivering my instruction and then seeing if the students were like the process of assessing students. I, I didn't really know a lot about. Um, so this video is to kind of give you some ideas on rubrics and what are they um, and maybe a website to go to to help you out. So rubrics, what are they? It's effective um, rubrics enable self-assessment and self-directed student learning. So there are about four steps to creating a rubric. Um, step one is kind of identifying the purpose and aims of assessing students. Um, step two is identifying what to assess. Step three, selection an appropriate type of rubric. So there's all different types of rubrics. I'm going to talk a little about that. Step four, identifying the performance criteria for assessing student work. So the 
there are different types of rubrics. So um, it's there are analytic rubrics, uh, developmental rubrics, holistic rubrics, and a checklist. Um, I have used the checklist in my classroom, um, especially with the arts. Sometimes you can list out the different instructions when it comes to drawing, and then they can slowly check off the different steps that they have completed. So that one is a really good one if you want the students to assess their own work. So a wonderful website is called Ruby Star. It's one that I've used to create rubrics um, and it really helps you break down the categories very uh, quickly and easily. Um, and I have one as an example. We did a leaf project just recently. This is this school year um, and it is the fall season. For, so for the arts, we're doing things all revolved around um, fall. Um, some of the different categories in the rubric, I have placed quality of instruction, uh, construction, time and effort, creativity, and attention to theme. So these are all the things I'm going to assess as a teacher um, when they are turning in their work. It, usually rubrics, there's a lot to type out. Um, so I'm trying to give some teachers some ways to kind of cut that time in half because we don't have a lot of time. Um, and so hopefully you check it out. I'm going to go ahead and kind of go into the program and share my screen with you and show you kind of how it works. Um, I am going to put also a link below if you want to check out this website. Um, it's very helpful. It's not just for art teachers. It's for any subject. So science is in there. Civics is in there. It's, it, all the different subjects are there. Um, so I think it's very helpful. It also has a place, as you notice, just to put the student's name, and then you can have your name at the top, as you see on this slide. And then it also lets you title the lesson as well. Okay, so if you found this video beneficial, definitely hit that subscribe button, um, hit the notification bell, um, so you get all the new videos for this school year, and my next video is going to be all about assigned seating um, versus not doing assigned seating. Um, so kind of seeing the contrast between the two, um, the benefits of organizing that in your classroom. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye, guys.